What's Hello. up? Hello. How's everybody? So uh, we're going live today because... Wait, is this the third time we've gone live with the third, series? Third time we've gone live. Third time. Um, all right. So for all the listeners and the viewers out there, we're going live today because we can't do it on Tuesday. David has this stupid anniversary thing he has Family. to do. <laughs> so his uh, studio is going to be closed down. He's, no, he's not allowed to speak today because of it either. That's right. We took his headset away from him. We gave him the old <laughs> when it comes time. But yeah, this uh, talk. third episode, I guess we can deem it shirt talk. Yes. and um, But kinda... the shirts are going to stay on. Yes, yes. For anybody out there watching. So yes, Paul Dolsky, or I think it's Paul or whoever. I forget which one always. No, I think I, it was James. No, that's yeah, Stokes. James Stokes on me to take my shirt yeah, off. Yeah, he, he I was, said I would. He was vying very heavily for you to right. take your top off. Paul Dolsky was going to go kidnap some people or do something. Yeah, so, he yeah, wanted to see right. them pepperoni nips. That's what it is. That's right, it is. <laughs> and that is my nickname, by the way. That PJ calls me, no one else. Not, actually, that's the nickname his mom gave him. <laughs> so anyway, uh, part of the reason why we're doing this, uh, this podcast today, this video podcast, is uh, the shirts have come in. Ta-da! Oh, hey. Wait. There we go. Makes it yes. a little better. Yes. The Devil's Night shirts have officially come in. Yes, they have. So anyone and everyone who uh, who got one, um, yours are going to be shipping out. I would say this week we're going to start shipping them out this week. We've got yes. to get through and make sure they're all right, all the right sizes, right amounts, and figure out our packaging, get all that together, and then we'll just start labeling and sending them out to everybody. And people in Owensboro will probably start sending emails, stuff like that, and saying, "Hey, come get them, or we'll bring them to you." And uh, but that'll all start this week. Yeah, we were telling everyone the shirts were going to be ready. Um, what by like the 23rd the friday the 23rd yeah they originally told us two weeks there was a two-week turnaround time is what we were told and they were extremely quick they got more it done. of a 14 hour turnaround <laughs> yeah like it was that. i don't, it wasn't even that i think <laughs> it was it was like more like a six hour turnaround yeah. time so yeah so the shirts are ready they're in for anyone who wants one of these incredibly awesome devil's night shirts yes eric is uh I'll get up here next not as a, next not as screen. attractive as like Cindy Crawford. Nobody wants to see the, but, the uh, watermelon I have there. But yeah, there you go. That's the only thing on him that's the size of a watermelon. I'm, we're the only model that we could afford today, anyways. Yes, today, so. But uh, but yeah, so Michael Broom did the uh, yes, the did. artwork for the shirts, and if, for those of you who may not be uh, familiar with Michael Broom or his or his art. He works with KNB Effects and that crew to help design some of the zombie looks for The Walking Dead. Um, he does other artwork as well, but he recently helped Creep with uh, the new incarnation of Creep Show. Which so is he's done, cool. yeah. So if you've seen a poster out there, an illustrated poster for Creep Show, he did the illustration for it, and it's awesome. So he did the he did our yeah he did the artwork for our poster. And we have turned it into a T-shirt, and now you can proudly wear Devil's Night on your chest. You could proudly wear a movie that does not yet fully exist on your chest. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of which, which is the reason we're having Shirt Talk. Right. Because all proceeds from the sales of these wonderful shirts go directly to the production of Devil's Night, which we are still trying to get the money to get filming because PJ and I are about to pull our hair out. Yeah. But uh, as you can see, uh, we do have anywhere from small up to 3X. Uh, the shirts are $20. It is $25 for shipping. Um, you can go to um, our bloodmoonpicks at gmail.com page and uh, let us know if you want one locally. Or you can go to bloodmoonpictures.com and there is a link to go and order one uh, through there. Uh, for shipping with the shirt cost is $25, like I said. But hey, <laughs> yes. No, he went to a shot of me for some reason. Yeah, and because, it's because yeah. I'm over here like trying to get uh, get it pulled up, and yeah. I haven't done that either. Shirt talk. Okay, there it is. It the video was actually not on my phone there for a second, and I, it, every time I refreshed my Facebook, it wasn't showing up. So refresh. Um, I assumed maybe there was an issue, but there's no issue because here it is. So, and I have zero headroom on that on that close up. Probably something on uh, David's end, but we won't go there. If there was, but uh, what if, if there was a problem, it would be on David. Oh, absolutely. You know, we so. don't make mistakes. That's right. We are mistakeless. 
I believe is the word. And if everything goes black and you can't hear us, it's because we've pissed David off. It's anyway. because David made another mistake. <laughs> That's so. Uh, for those of you who uh, are wanting one of these shirts, they are twenty dollars plus shipping and handling, so they're twenty five dollars total. But all that money goes towards helping the production of Volumes of Blood, which we are still in the process of, uh, you know, putting everything together. We we have a majority of the cast, we have mm-hmm. the crew, mm-hmm. we have some of the locations. The script is completely done, and we are extremely excited about about the script, the strength of it. Um, everybody who's read the scripts really seems to love it. Or if you're if you're Ryan Ziegler, you think it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> he was here. He 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 was here last week on the show, and he thought that the the script he read was more than satisfactory. And I'll take it. I'll take that. <laughs> so I ran into uh, one of our buddies over the weekend, and uh, I don't know who you're. Ta- I don't have a social life. I'm getting ready, so I really I'm getting ready to say. I said I ran about. into him. And uh, it's Jack Midkiff. You know who Jack is. Oh, yeah, He's our yeah, buddy yeah, Jack. Yeah. He's done yeah. music for us. Oh, yeah. He mess- speaking of which, he messaged me yesterday about you passing the buck. You can yeah. go ahead and continue your story. Well, that's what I was going to, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> and I'm also talking about him on air. So he's done music for us. You've seen, yep. you've seen him. If you've seen the first Volumes of Blood, you saw him in Volumes of Blood. He's in the behind the scenes video yep. he's, that the uh, library did. He's carrying some lights around. He's throwing us some snippets of his music and uh, want to come on board and maybe do a little more than that. He discussed with me. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool running into him this weekend. And. Um, He's uh, got some music he wants to see here. I told him to send it our way, but I told him I would talk to you today, and I have. I've got proof now, yep. and, but he, I told him to go ahead and let you know anyway, so, you know, from both yep. ends, and I'm not supposed to hit the mic. Yeah, he said, uh, he said, hey, I'm messaging you. I said something to Eric about wanting to do music. Eric said, you're kind of the main guy, so you make all the important decisions. <laughs> So he said I should and message we're you about about it. David Cut. Um, David Cut. No, no. And then uh, that's and not then, at all how yeah. it happened. And then I responded to him, and I was like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Who's this Eric Buskison that you talk about? Well, he originally came up, <laughs> and the Ryan comment, the Ryan comment, there he came up to me. He goes, Yeah. He goes, I watched your all's latest video of the day. He goes, Man, it was mostly about chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gave Lee's uh, yeah. famous recipe yeah. chicken a great plug. Yeah, Ryan's chicken towel. We're not going to get into yeah. that. I mean, that's old, but you know yeah. that's how the whole Jack came up. But uh, we'll talk more about Jack afterwards. Yeah, let's uh, let's go back into shirt. That, that prop, that whole thing there, probably could have been something that we uh, we left for after the show anyway. But yeah, that's all right. But there you go, yep. Jack. Get off me. That's so what they anyway. call filler. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jack Medkiff was our filler today. Who knows? Yes. You could be next week. Keep watching. That's right. Message me or Eric. We'll pretend like we don't know who you are, <laughs> and then we'll talk about you on the show. Except David Abrams, we don't want to hear from you. That's right. All, All right, right. So, shirts. Shirts. Here, so, here's, so, I had actually had somebody last night ask me where we were at with, uh, with funding. And we've been very transparent about it. We're, we're, towards, we're coming towards... The fifteen thousand mark. We're trying to raise fifty thousand, so there's a huge bridge to gap there. Yeah, but um, we're, we're around thirty percent or so. Right. I do. I will throw this out here because this is something, and, and Eric and I did not discuss this. So, so d- depending on what the look he gives me, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll determine whether or not I should have said something. And well, here we go. But one of the things that we have discussed with recently was maybe finding someone who was interested in helping us find local and regional businesses. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, and, we, uh, we have for, discussed for, that. For a, uh, for a commission, right? essentially. Someone who is in sales, knows the area, knows businesses in the area, may already be in sales that could do this on the side or is looking for a side sales job or can do this with the sales job they're doing. Yeah. So if anybody out there is watching and you're interested mm-hmm. in maybe coming on to the project and helping out, we would love um, to talk yeah, to you about you, it. You know, if you have con- local connections, or regional connections with businesses, essentially we're, what we're looking for is we're looking for um, businesses that are looking for kind of a, an out-of-the-approach way of marketing their brand mm-hmm. through our production. Mm-hmm. And that worked very successfully on the second film, and that's how we got it funded. So that's, you know, that's, what we're lo- that's part of what we're doing in order to uh, get the the third the third film funded, and some of the some of the ways that happened and can happen 
is uh, while PJ gets focused on him and his shirt, uh, him and our shirt. My name is Aaron. But, I mean, that could be, let's say, if you're a local pizza part place, you could have a delivery guy coming up during the scene delivering a pizza, or they could be talking in a living room, and there could be a pizza box they're eating pizza out of. They could have, you know, they could be wearing a T-shirt that is your local business. Um, you could have, we could open the door for the pizza guy, and your local business truck could be going by. There's so many yeah. ways. If you have a beverage. Beverage, you, true. You, a local whether distillery. It's a cola, cola. Yeah, anything. Or alcohol of right. some kind. We have characters that, you know, they can be, there's several party scenes in the movie, right. so they can be heavily, it can be, you know, heavily mm -hmm. focused on throughout those scenes. Um, Any kind of company sign that could um, be in a yard. Yeah, radio. There's right. there's several situations where we there's could do radio televisions ads on. There's, t there's radio, so we can do radio ads, television ads. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different, different ways we can help right. promote and show off and, and highlight, showcase, if you will, your product. If you're a local regional business mm -hmm. in uh, in this new film, and we premiere our movies around the area, so you're looking at Owensboro, Evansville, Louisville, Indianapolis, places Henderson. around him to Henderson that are going to be seen. So you're thinking, oh, I'm in Evansville. What's that going to do me any good for a film being made in Owensboro? Well, I mean, we're in film festivals in Evansville usually, and we're showing our movie in Evansville. Um, we, we, you know, that also includes a lot of social shout outs for, Hey, this company did this for us. Wait, wait till you see their product in our new movie. Plus at premieres, there's advertising at the premieres for people to came on board and did the same thing. So it's not just getting your product in there. There's social, um, advertising through social media. And then there's also signage that goes along with that at premieres and stuff. Yeah. And our premieres have thankfully been. Pretty well, pretty well uh, yeah, received. Pretty, pretty well received. They've uh, we had about four hundred plus at the last, and that was. And then we also had a screening um, at the Malco, mm -hmm. which you know we'll be doing more uh, situations like that. We'll have more screenings, Hopefully. more mm -hmm. premieres locally. So, um, yeah. So there's, I mean, from the from the social media reach to just the local coverage from radio, TV. Um, pub, various publications like News for You and Owensboro Living and things like that. Um, there, there's all kinds of different ways that uh, you know that we're getting exposure for the production. That'll then in turn help get exposure for what uh, for what your product is in, in the film. So, so if you're into sales and this sounds like something you might be interested in, you know, look look us up on bloodmoonpicks at gmail dot com. Yeah, um, messages messages through personally Facebook. through Facebook. Yep. Um, and we'd be more willing to get on the phone, talk to you, meet you personally, and uh, discuss uh, the ins and outs of doing that. And we'd love to hear from anybody. And like I said, that's Evansville, Henderson, Bowling Green, Owensboro. Any, you know, any, you know, this whole area just doesn't have to be Owensboro. Um, so if you do a lot of sales regionally, hey, they, we're good with that as well. That's what we're looking for, actually. Right. So um, the 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 films are very locally. What's the what, what's what's what am I trying to say here, Eric? Well, we say community based a lot. <laughs> community based. There we say you go. community very, based. All right. I mean, you know, the the films have screened all over the country. They've screened in Canada. They they've screened over in the UK. But we are at the same time very grassroots. So, mm -hmm. so the films that we make are very heavily seen and promoted and pushed in this area. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I was trying to trying to say. But all I right. brain farted. Because I'm not perfect. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's already a couple of businesses on board, but, I mean, two, two businesses is not going to crowd our, our film. We have a lot of areas for promotion. Um, so, you know, contact us about it. And, you know, and like PJ said, I mean, we get it out there, N not just the product that's in there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's upwards of 60 or so opportunities for your branding for being showcased in the film. Uh, somewhere between 60 and 80, I want to say. <laughs> hey, uh, Eric just, and PJ, just interrupt for just a second. Off camera over here. Hey, hey, yes, hey, hey what's doing? going hey, on? Dave. Uh, but we're getting a lot of uh, questions about the... I um, saw 50. Matthew Allen wants to know about the shirts. Are they 50-50? Yeah, if you look at the, uh, the shirts, they are. If you look at the shirts in your bag, I forget. They are a 50-50 blend. They are a 50-50 blend. They are, yes. Okay. And uh, they, they uh, the sh These shirts are a 50-50 blend. They're Gildan Dry Blend. Gildan Dry oh, Blend, 50-50 yeah. blend. So there's your answer, Matthew. Yeah. Thanks for asking. And they're really good. 50% cotton, 50% polyester. Thick quality, good yeah. quality. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're a good quality shirt. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, we're and they're soft. Yeah, they are very soft. They are soft. And uh, Dale Colley, thanks for watching. And if uh, Horseshoes has to be played and me beat you to donate, then just forget about it because I'm not going to beat you. I haven't played in years, and I'm older now when I used to whip your butt at it years ago. But anyway, you can get your wallet out and donate anyway. Um, are you good at Horseshoes? Used to be decent. Do years you know ago. Dale? No, I know Dale. Mm-hmm. Known Dale okay. a long time. So you played horseshoes with him? Yeah, more Okay, more. so Couple there's a backstory there. Yeah, he, he brags okay. like he used to beat me. I could never beat him, but it's, it's I'm a gonna lie. Say, it's a lie. Okay, I'm going to say that you... I could probably beat him today, but, you know, we're not going to go there. But thanks for joining in, Dale. Good talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> One of our good buddies, David Creamer, is watching. Thanks for joining us, David. David's uh, been a great help with this film, and hopefully uh, we're going to do more with him in the future with the film. Um, he's uh, com speaking about community base. He's with FOE here in Owensboro. Yep, that's uh, the Fraternal Order of Eagles. Yes, they've helped us out quite a bit. And uh, the Fraternal Order, Order of Eagles that we didn't know were actually started by a bunch of actors and directors yep. back well, theater, theater, theater owners. owners. Theater owners, that's theater right. Theater owners. Uh, yeah. Four different theater owners started FOE, God, how many, yeah. what, 80-something years ago? And it, yeah, it was a long time ago. They were ago. all across the United States and in Canada. And, uh, but they, they were very heavily involved like in artistic endeavors right. and things, which... We found really interesting. They've got a really interesting history and backstory. Right. So um, I didn't know anything about it, truthfully, until you right. had mentioned it. And, yeah, and uh, then David I researched us, it. David yeah. sent us the stuff. So. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, they've got a really cool history. But they've been really good to us, helping us out, and um, we appreciate that. And hope we can work with them some more. Thanks for joining us. David McMahon says, look at those handsome dudes. Where are they? What? Is somebody holding pictures up behind us? I think so. Uh, must be. So they must. I think David probably put a picture of uh, Freddie Prince Jr. up on the. Uh, uh, David, on man, the you, you already there. have a part. You don't have to lie like that yeah. or you know no, schmooze David, us. David, you, don't, you don't have to schmooze us. David McMahon will continue to suck up even after you're like, look, <laughs> after the part's done and he's home. <laughs> yeah, you have a role. It took him three years of sucking up to really finally get to the audition process. Then he got a role and he still. Kiss his ass. Um, he better not come to <laughs> set wearing those short shorts and that uh, the half midriff. Shirt and the midriff. The yeah. mesh midriff. That or he had or should we website? demand that now? I don't know. You know, that might be his uh, new yeah, costume uh, for every be. project that he ever be. does going forward. But thank you for that, David. That yeah. was nice of you, even though we know, well, I know it's a lie. Matthew uh, Ohm says, luckily, PJ has a great head of hair. I'm assuming he's talking maybe the headroom from earlier. It's a reference to that, maybe. But uh, he wouldn't be the only one. I, I, get, uh, I get several compliments about my hair for some reason. It's a little off today, but I don't know. Trina says I'm crazy because I'll say that I'm having, like, an off hair day. Some days I'll say my hair is on point. And Trina's like, your hair looks the same every day. I don't understand what you're talking about. But I think sometimes, some days it looks better than others. It's probably just a narcissist thing. Oh, yeah. You're a narcissist, all right. I'm not a narcissist. PJ Starks is a narcissist. I have heard some it here nar today. No, I have some narcissistic qualities, oh, but I wouldn't say that that makes me a full-fledged narcissist. Look it up when you get home. I already did. I looked it up Look yesterday, it up. and it was right mostly, after I Googled myself. Mostly. That's beside the point. Little N, not capital N. All I can say is hold on to that hair all while you can. <laughs> Cause in I'm a, looking at you because in I a know. few years, <laughs> I mean, you know, my it's, hair used to be your color, buddy. It's funny. It's like but yeah, I'm, I was like this when I started working with you five years, and look what it did to me. Yeah, I mean, I look at this. It's like you were. It's like you uh, went into the presidency, <laughs> and here it is, four, <laughs> four or five years later, and you've had all this stress. But uh, yeah, it's it's funny because I used to only have like one gray hair here. And I've noticed recently I've got several gray hairs kind of sprouting all over the place. And then I did notice that, like, my hairline in the front isn't as solid as it used to be. It's and called I, marriage and, and kids. I've, I've started getting a few more wrinkles. Like here I noticed that, yeah. It's called adulting, marriage, and kids is what yeah. that is. Paying bills. Yeah. yeah. I'm also um, fatter, but that probably has more to do with eating looks like Nick Bond peanut butter sent you and macaroni a message. and cheese late at night. Looks like Nick Bond sent you a message. said, hello. Oh, hey, man, what's going on? That's Hold on a second. Alex is watching. Thank you, Alex. I ran into Alex. Thank you, Nick. It's been a long time since Nick I ran in, I ran into Alex the other day at uh, Papa Murphy's. It was good seeing him. Kind of. I mean, a, no, I'm kidding. That was, was a great good. story. You should tell more like yeah. it. Yeah, well, you know. 
David just gave me a of course courtesy, he just wanted courtesy to, laugh back there in the booth. Alex just wanted to know about you know how you were doing. He really didn't well, say course. anything about me. Well, it's because he know. doesn't know who you are. That's right. We we've established on many occasions. <laughs> Nobody knows who you are. I'm the face of Blue. Oh, I mean, by the way, I'm Eric. Unfortunately, everyone. my name's Eric Eskison. I uh, actually make films here in Owensboro with PJ. Uh, so, but anyway, hey, we're getting off topic. We're here to talk. Uh, we're doing shirt talk um, here at some. Where are we at? We're at some studio. Um, um, broke back. Studios. Oh, broke back. No, wasn't that a movie? No. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah, in the, we're, we're up in the mountains at Broke Back Studios. <laughs> we're at, <laughs> losing connection. Losing connection. Oh, we have in the booth is <laughs> saying. His yeah, on, yeah. So. Well, he had it on. He took it off a few minutes ago. We're in the Outbreak Studios here at our buddy David's house, uh, where yeah. he does Escape Pod. Uh, which is his podcast series that he does. He's done uh, quite a few of them. And uh, he and Tony built this lovely studio yep. and has graciously, graciously let us in here to continue come in. Yeah, you should subscribe to their yes, YouTube you should. channel. You should check out their podcast. It's outbreakpatpodcast.com, correct? Can you get a little zoom in on your little thing down there? I think he said podcast a minute ago. Podcast? I'm pretty sure he did. Hey, we're trying to help you that's out. That's a whole other that's Hey, a whole we're other trying thing. to help you out. Don't make us roll past that. I will come over there. Shirts. Speaking, Shirts. speaking of podcasts, yes, uh, I was recently on Tales from the Podcast. Mm-hmm. So if anybody out there, I got a chance to talk with uh, Justin on Tales from the Podcast about uh, about well, Tales from the Crypt episode, the Switch. So it just dropped this past weekend. So if anybody wants to listen to that, okay. go so check we're it out. Talking about shirts for <laughs> our. Uh, New hey, movie. I'm giving him some love. <laughs> he was cool enough to bring me on his podcast. Well, so that was nice. I'm going to give it a push. That was nice of you. But yeah, we are here talking about our attire today. Yes. We have the new Devil's Night t-shirts on, um, as you can see up here. Uh, we are selling them to raise money for Devil's Night 3. Volumes of Blood 3. Devil's Night, Volumes of Blood 3. I was trying to make a joke. And it there's didn't work. Sev- apparently, there's several yeah. titles. But anyway, several, that's several what titles. we're here doing. We're here letting you know, hey, people that have already ordered these shirts, we are going to be getting this all together and start shipping them out this week. Hopefully, we'll have everybody's to them within the next two weeks. Uh, we just got to go through everything, get everything packaged up, labeled, and shipped off. So give us a little time. We just got them. Uh, we're just here to show everybody what they look like. Uh, this is exactly what you're going to be getting. Uh, we're not really sure whose shirts we're currently yeah. wearing. Yeah. So if um, if you want these shirts that we're wearing, we will autograph them, but it, it'll be $30 plus shipping. Right. If you get a shirt that smells like Old Spice and Old Man, then you'll know who was, we- who was wearing your shirt. Correct. <laughs> Or if you'll just notice the difference between 3X and XL, you'll know. That's right. Oh, that was What bad. fat guy was wearing my shirt but smells beautifully? <laughs> like Old Spice. What sort of you, you need to be skinny a, old need, man need to get a horse with you with no rolling shirt on. in mothballs was wearing my shirt? <laughs> we need to get a horse with you riding backwards with no shirt on, old, yes. like the guy in the Old Spice commercials. I look, yeah. When I take my shirt off, I look just like Terry Crews. I'm built, baby. Yeah, he, he really I've is. Got a, I've got a whole mound of abs just all kind of thrown together right here. <laughs> he hasn't had a mound his whole life. But back to shirts. Uh, you can order them for $20 a piece. Uh, that it would be $25 with shipping and handling. Um, we do have small through 3X. Hit us up on bloodmoonpictures.com. You can click on the link there and go directly to the site. Uh, use PayPal, or there is a button you can yeah. click on to pay, which is a credit card or whatever. You do not have to go through PayPal. You can hit us up on bloodmoonpix at gmail.com. If you have a question about some other way of getting the T-shirt, we can talk to you that way as well. Yeah, and um, we got a whole bunch of extras. So yep. while the pre-sales did far better than what we were expecting, we did order extra that way because uh, we had several individuals' messages saying that uh, – Excuse me, that they uh, that they didn't, weren't able to get one in time during the pre-orders, so right. they still wanted one, and they wanted to know if they'd still be able to get their hands on one. The answer is yes. We do. Uh, we got we got a little Meyer bag here with about three shirts left, so you better act now. <laughs> <laughs> and if we do run out of your size, we will take a couple of mediums or larges and sew them together to That's right. try and fit. If you need you know. a 4x, we'll take a small and a 3x. <laughs> And we'll just we'll make it work. We'll it'll look it good. Together. Trust me. That's how we did it. It'll, it'll be quality. We'll get Barbie Clark to come in. We'll have her do Barbie it. Barbie can do it. Barbie yeah, can do Barbie's anything. Barbie's amazing. So yes. she can make anything look good. That's right. So she'll sew your shirts. And hey, then she'll she, autograph it for you. She made me look good as Fred. Well, that's or she unintentionally made me look bad. 
Uh, yes, yeah, I would she, say it's yeah. more along those lines. So she did a good job making Fred look bad. <laughs> uh, Nick wants to know how our funding is going. Uh, I mean, it's not going horrible. We're, we're getting money in, but it's trickling in. It's coming in far slower than what we were hoping for, but we're still getting funding. Mm-hmm. So the, it, it's, it's, it's not a matter of will the movie get made. It's a matter of when the movie will get made because we can't really... We can't get going on production as far as like doing scheduling and moving forward on shooting until we either get a majority of the funding that we require or all the funding we, we require. So we are getting money in, um, and we, we, the whole movie itself, what, we, what we've come to uh, project it is about $50,000 because we have you know, insurance, equipment rentals, travel, food, lodging for the cast and crew. We have some genre veterans like Ellen Udy. Tamara Glenn, Bill Oberst Jr., and uh, Lynn Lowry, who are going to be coming onto the project. Um, so, you know, we've got to bring them in. I would say just special effects and the... Uh, oh, yeah, the special effects and the, the other, wardrobe. And, the, and, the, and the, four, the, four, uh, extra, uh, ugh, the four actors and actresses that have uh, agreed to be in our cast, the ones he was naming, is probably going to be about 40, 40 to 50% of what right. our budget is. It's I a mean, very, very... <laughs> special effects heavy. Special effects heavy film. Um, Which is good for you, the viewer. Right. If you were looking for volumes of blood and you didn't feel like you got it on the first one and you still didn't feel like you got it on the second one, you sure as shit are going to get it on the third one. I can tell you right now because when, uh, first of all, when we had our initial meeting with Cassandra Baker, who did special effects for the second film, is coming back for the third film. Um, yeah, she, she about had, uh, I think she about had like a pulmonary embolism. Whenever, whenever we t- told her how many uh, deaths there were and things of that nature, I've never seen somebody look at you with such a hate stare in all my life. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, but I think she she's finally come to terms and cope. She's coping at least. She's healed somewhat since then. And um, yeah, she has given us her budget as far as what it's going to take to pull off these special effects. It's about what we expected, mm-hmm. I would say. And yeah, uh, yeah it's it's. It's a nice chunk of the overall budget. It's like Francine Marcel has asked if I said your last name. <laughs> if I didn't, I apologize. She wants to know what percent we still need for our budget. And right now, it's about 70%. It's, it's quite high. Yeah. Uh, and that's a lot. And it's, slow, it's slowly coming in, though. I mean, it is slowly coming in. That, hit, that has raised. I mean, we were at 5%. Now, you know, then when we were like 15, then we were 19. So we're right at about 30% right now. Um, we do have these shirt sales going on, which is helping. Uh, we are going to have, uh, at some point in the near future, we're going to have um, some sort of an auction for some paraphernalia from the first two films. We don't know when we're going to do that. Have we got a time frame on that or timeline, PJ, on doing the auction on uh, stuff uh, for the films? Right. That, I mean, that's only in the works, but we don't have a specific time okay. frame yet. So that will be we, coming. We still have to get to my house and go down and yeah. And find out what and we go have through all the movie stuff and some of my exactly I have what. some of the stuff at my house too so yeah um, but we're gonna do that that's part of it um, we're still thinking we're gonna get some businesses come on board to help us out uh, we may even do a GoFundMe for something else at a later date we got several projects in mind that are gonna help raise this up uh, but a lot of us are just talking to you guys out here to get the word out for us. Um, you know, if you can buy a shirt, great. But if you're not, hey, if somebody's a hard fan, tell them about it. Maybe they think the shirt's cool. They'd want to buy it to help out. So, you know, this is just to let, this is just for awareness. I mean, right. we, we want to make this film, but we want people to know we want to make this film. We want to let you know how you can help us make this film. We just don't want to say, oh, here's $10,000, make the film. That would be great. But we're trying to give something back where you feel like you're getting your money's worth out of it. But it's still helping us. Right. And if anybody's an angel donor... Or if they have a rich uncle, or if you just like supporting uh, independent horror endeavors, we can work something out. That's right. You know, I mean, we're we're I mean, we we've discussed the potential for investors. Uh, I'd be lying if I said that we weren't trying to wait until the eleventh hour before we decide whether or not full blown we feel like we actually need some investor help on the project because like we still have other methods we're we're seeking first in terms of getting the film funded but if anybody out there whether you know you 
have the ability to help us find other individuals who you know want to help fund Volumes of Blood Three. If and if you're and if you're not familiar with Volumes of Blood at all, the easiest way to look it up and to see kind of what the the social reach has been and the impact and what critics think and what people who have audiences and individuals who have watched the film think just google volumes of blood that's the easiest and best way to do it you'll find or you can go to bloodmoonpictures.com and there, yeah there is that too we've got a whole bunch of uh the press and things on that and that'll get you to all that right so yeah you can you can check all that out and that'll give you a really good idea you'll find out more than you ever wanted to know about volumes of blood and what we've done what we've done what we're doing and if you want to see if you want to see the first and second film and you haven't and you're interested in the third or helping out with third, you can go to screenteamreleasing.com. Yes. They have the first one. That's the only way to get it this time. Um, but the second one, Horror Stories, you can watch that on Hulu, uh, Amazon no. Prime. Is it on Hulu? It's not Voodoo? on Hulu. Voodoo. Voodoo. I always you're thinking Voodoo. I know. Voodoo. And you can watch it for free on Voodoo as well. And uh, Amazon Prime, you can watch them free if you have uh, both of them. Uh, and you can get them through them as yeah. well. Google Play, iTunes. And um, VHX. Dark Cuts. Dark Com. Yeah, there's a whole bunch yeah. of different. You can Google so that as well. So if you want to well. familiar yourself, yourself. But, I mean, you can go to bloodmoonpictures.com. You can see the previews to both movies. Kind of give you an insight of what they look like. Um, but you can watch them for free on Vudu and Amazon Prime, the second one anyway. Yeah. Yes, Don, Donald Schnell has chimed in and said Devil's Night is coming. Yes, it is. Like molasses in winter, but it is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it is uh, gonna a happen. Deep, deep winter. I just, I just have a feeling that the day when we talk at the premiere, PJ and I are gonna have like tears coming down our eyes because we're finally getting to show this film. We yeah. want this film premiering now because we know exactly yeah. what it's gonna look like, and we're excited about people seeing it, and we just can't get to that point. I would. It's killing me on the inside to have these like scripts sitting here and not be able to be shooting yet. Yeah, oh, I know. I'm I'm the same way, man. I'm dying. You know, it cuz and it, and what makes it worse is everybody who's read the scripts absolutely loves the scripts. Yeah. So, well Francine, thanks for your question a while ago. Chris Burden has said, "Hi guys. Hey Chris, how you doing?" Uh, have we missed anybody else yet? I don't think so. I don't so. think so. No. Hey, Jack Midkiff is watching. Have we talked about who's Jack? that? <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Jack. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, guys, um, we're here talking about these T-shirts and how you can help fund uh, Devil's Night Volumes of Blood 3. Yeah, right now this is the easiest and best way. You can wear some great artwork on your uh, chest. You can support a local project. Even if you're not local, you can still support what I think is an awesome project. And it's a pretty cool, pretty cool artwork. Michael Broom did a hell of a job. Yeah, on he this. really did. Um, I'm always nervous about sending out artwork to get artwork done by somebody because I'm like, when we get it back and be like, oh man, you know. Yeah. But this was this was. Yeah, I think the t-shirts. Came I out was really super well. pleased, and you know, if you like I said, PJ said earlier, you might not have been on here. If you're a Walking Dead fan, I mean, Michael Broom, he he designed some of the zombies for the Walking Dead. He's uh, done the new um, um, poster for Creep Show. Uh, so he's done a lot of work under uh, Nicotero. So, I mean, if you're a Walking Dead fan, I mean, you're going to be getting smart work done by a guy who worked with Walking Dead. Right. So, you know, you're getting a pretty cool T-shirt with some cool art, and you're helping get a movie made, and you're keeping us from crying on camera. So, you know, look us up on uh, BlowMoonPictures.com. You can uh, click on there and go uh, order your shirt. You don't have to go through PayPal. There's another button for, uh, it's, I think it says, Other Pay. And you can use a credit card or whatever. You don't have to use PayPal. Yeah. Um, you can contact us. Um, on Blue if Blue you have Blue. any issues, you can't. That's We've had some people have yeah. issues, but it seems anyone who uses Safari through their phone has had some issues. Um, Michael Lawrence says the suspense is killing yeah. me. And if the suspense is killing him, yes. we're already dead. How do you think we feel? Yes. That's right. So we're already dead on the inside. Our buddy Todd Reynolds just joined us. Good evening. Hey, Todd. Well, good evening. Todd is a part of the production. Yes, he is. He was a part of the first film. He was a part of the second film. And we're bringing him back in a big way on the third film. That's right. And he has one of my favorite lines in the movie. His character does. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say. No. I'm not going to say what it is, but you can't say what it is either. Does he know that? I don't know if he knows it or not. But <laughs> it's a great line. is killing you, Todd. <laughs> 
Uh, Matthew Ulm says, what time of year? I, apparently, I'm going through late puberty with my voice cracking. What time of year would you shoot ideally to fit the script? Ideally, shooting any movie, it would be great to do it to do only movies in the fall. Yeah, exactly. We always end up shooting movies. Since it's like, midsummer. Yeah, it's you know we're sh- we shot a we shot a Christmas movie sequence, pretty much. Well, luckily it ended up being cold somehow. Yes. It wound up being cold, so we got to see people's breath. But normally, it's so hot. Um, our 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 balls look like Quentin Tarantino's from Planet Terror. That's how bad it is. I didn't know he was looking at my balls, but okay. Mine are anyway. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. I'm what not was going to speak on there. for you. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was funny. Though the, that one scene that we did do, uh, the only outside shot of that Christmas episode, it actually started spitting like ice and rain. Yeah. And, and it was. Uh, it got really cold. All of a sudden, you could hear. Um, God, I can't even think of the word. Sleet hitting the porch and hitting the street and the people were luckily were wearing old time Christmas costumes. So actually I think they stayed pretty warm, kind of, but if you could it see wasn't, breath, it didn't get cold though at a time of year where it normally gets cold. Right, right. It just, it was truly an anomaly right? and it's never happened before or since working on a project. So yeah, a lot of people I think probably think that was added in, but they were, it was a really, you can, when you see their breath, that's really their breath. It got cold all of a sudden outside, which is fantastic. So it, cause it fit. But it just we were lucky. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. It was one of the rare times that actually felt really good shooting a movie. Um, but normally it's so hot. We shot feeding time on the second floor of this house, and it was like 120 degrees outside. Of course, we had to turn. When you're shooting for sound, you have to turn the air conditioning off so there's none of that happening in the background. So, of course, there's no air, air running, <sighs> and you've got 20-plus people standing around upstairs, and you have lights. It was miserable. Oh, and are but you, if you watch the footage, it doesn't look that way. You would you, never think. You're talking about when we filmed upstairs? Yes. Yeah, and they had to keep, For the, feeding they, time. They had to keep the sh- door shut as well because right. the ambiance they were making for the room kept escaping out, so they had to shut the door to keep that in there. So, I mean, you would open the door when you would holler cut and everybody in there, it would just be sweat would be right. running down their faces. But if it you look, horrible. once again, if you look at the footage, it doesn't, All right. it doesn't look like any of us hate life. All right. But we did. <laughs> and then Cassandra's makeup. How many times did he go downstairs and have to be melting redone? Yeah. off of his face? They'd and holler cut, and part of it would be hanging down. We went downstairs in the basement in the cool like three times. Yeah, we, we hung out. Stop shooting. We hung out in the basement quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, we were producers, so, yeah, yeah, we got we got we got to do that. Looks we like we didn't want to add any more warm bodies right. to that to that second well, we, floor. So it's the better thing that is, we stayed down the better there. way to put that is, is we have a great group of people that come on board and help us out in so many different aspects, so we can walk away. And know what needs to be done is going to get done. I mean, we're right. there to help out if there's a problem or something, but they know what needs to be done, and we trust them to get that done. So we can walk away and sit in the air while they're miserable. Yeah. So you know that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Try, I'm trying here. Uh, the Kentucky, uh, the Kentucky filmmaker, Kentucky filmmaker is watching. Donald Schnell says hire Jillian Jansen and I for an epic death. We'll talk. Yes. Have your people call call our people. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for everybody for watching. Uh, any of you that have just tuned in, we are here because of the attire we are wearing and the picture you see here. Buy a shirt now. Yep. No. Yeah. If you can, you want to support local indie horror, you want to help us get Devil's Night made, this is one way you can do it. We have shirts for sale from well, these shirts specifically that we're wearing, you see here, from small all the way to 3X. Um, they are a 50-50 blend, Matthew Alm, and uh, they're $20. And Matthew's not the only one who I asked know. about it. I'm glad he, whether I'm or not actually it was a glad he asked blend. that. Thank you, Matthew. Well, we finally had an answer for that time. question. Right. That's what's um, most important. So if you order these, there will be $25 with shipping and handling. You can go to the bloodmoonpictures.com page, and there is a spot there to click on to order the shirts. Um, it will say PayPal, but you can click on pay another, another way. And avoid the PayPal if you want to do credit card or whatever. Or you can contact PJ and I at bloodmoonpicks at gmail.com. And if you want to talk about maybe working out another way to take care of that, we'll see what we can't do. Uh, but this is all 100% everything we make off these t-shirt sales goes to production for Devil's Night Volumes of Blood 3. Right. We can't do it without your all's help. 
Um, if you don't want a T-shirt for yourself, buy one for a horror fan. Hey, Christmas is only how many months away? Right. Several. There you go. Very well, few, actually. So it'll be These in make in great time. stocking stuff. Yeah, it'll be in in time, and you won't have to worry about shopping for that extra person last minute at Christmas. You'll be done. <laughs> But aside from sounding like a uh, uh, just a sales video, yes, Devil's Night is the final and closing chapter in a trilogy that, when I conceived back in 2014, was never expected to get this far. But so many incredibly talented people, locally and abroad, got on board, believed in the idea loved what we were trying to do and got behind the project and made it happen. And now here we are mm -hmm. five years later trying to get the third film made. We've come a very long way. We've come, we've, we've come so far. We never expected to get to this point. Right. We never, we never expected to be sitting here talking about a third film. We've so had, so yeah. I, I think where we're at now is a testament to the other two projects and everybody's hard work and the talent that we have in this area, the talent we have in the region, and the talent we have all over the country because we've had filmmakers and from all over the place come be a part of this project. Directors, same writers. Same way, yeah, well, same way with the third film. We have people coming from the East Coast. We have people coming <clears throat> from the West Coast. We have people coming from almost right on the Canadian border to the deep from south. Florida, yeah, and Atlanta and right. Texas. We have people all over that somehow <laughs> really loved what we did previously on the other two films and want to be a part of this third film. So from the outside looking in, I'm sure it's like, wow, it seems to be taking a really long time to get this project made, but that's kind of the nature of the beast. Sometimes it takes a lot of time and a lot of hard diligence and perseverance to get your project made and that's what devil's night has become and it's weird because the other two happened very quickly but this one is much larger in scope from concept to cast the the amount of crew or the amount of like uh, characters there are and the types of death scenes it's like everything is so much bigger and 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 better in this project and it's the same with the writing and the characterization and just the overall narrative it's just so much bigger and better in general. So, yeah, it's taking a little bit longer. But that's only because we need the right people to get behind us, you know, that have gotten behind us or maybe weren't previously behind us on the second one. But we're, we're, we're looking for people who, who want to help us get this project made. And uh, those people are out there. We just have to find them. And we have the support of, of many right now. But they're like us, you know, they work nine to five. They don't have a whole lot of money. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're, they're, they're helping where they can. We're helping and pitching in where we can. But I think in order to get us over that final fi uh, financing hurdle, it's going to take that one or two or three people that really say, I want to be a part of what they're doing. I see what they've done. I really support what they've done and what they're planning on finishing. And I'm going to help them make it happen. So if any of you watching or listening, know that person that can hopefully see our passion and see our love for what we're doing and that we want to finish this. And like I said, we've come so far. There's, we're not giving up, and it's going to happen. Damn it. Matthew Alm, no, this is not velvet. Matthew wanted to know if this was velvet. It's not velvet. Thank you for asking. Uh, on what you're saying, it's construction as, paper. We have uh, one of our buddies that has helped us out a lot and has done some pushing for us, uh, trying to help out. Ray Merrick from uh, the Horror Syndicate yep. is watching. Hey, Ray, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for uh, chiming in. Um, but ultimately, everything PJ just said, I mean, it's true. I mean, we've got we've had directors and writers and actors come from all over and give their expertise and what they excel at to put us where we're at today i mean yeah i mean you hear all the time him talking about it was his concept that was conceived that got us to this point but yeah. with him doing that truth hurts doesn't it with the, him doing that <laughs> the people that he's met over time that wanted to come on board with him and to help out and then when i met him and that i wanted to come on board and help out and begged him to help and 
then other people that he worked with on the first one wanted to come back on the second one. So we've reused people. We do have some people like Todd Reynolds is coming back for a third one. But, I mean, he's an actor. It's easier that way because of roles. But we've utilized a lot of different directors and writers from all over. And I think that's what's great about this. We talk about it's community-based, but it's, 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 it's in all indie horror. It's people that do indie films pulling together, wanting to help each other out. And it's, it's worked out wonderful. So anybody watching that has helped with any of the films up till now. Thank you so much. We wouldn't be sitting here talking if it wasn't for you, regardless of whose concept uh, that was conceived. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, those people coming on board, if they hadn't have been there, the production crew from um, Paducah, oh my God, that whole crew. I mean, we didn't have them in the first film, but we had, things were a little different with the first one. We had a lot of great people coming in for each, but they came in and just were blockbusters and can't wait to work with them on the third one. Yep. Um, it's it's just been un unreal the people that have helped out to get us to where we're at. It's it uh, it takes <laughs> it takes a village. It's funny. It's it it literally does. There's a lot of collaboration that happens on a project, and there, there's that cliche with raising a child that it takes a a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, that's what a film is because it goes from conception to completion. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that have to happen, and it takes a whole lot of hard work, a whole lot of time, a whole lot of coordination, a whole lot of different types of artistry to come together from pre to post. And then, of course, beyond, you have people coming onto the project to, you know, people after the fact, like you said, with Ray or like Kelly with Horror Fuel or Tori with Pop Horror or Brian with Fits of Horror. And, uh, you know, there's all these different when it, when it comes to getting the word out, you know, that's just as important as the meetings of sitting down in the beginning where you're saying, okay, what are we going to try to accomplish with this? So many different things that have to happen in order for it to come together. And, and yeah, it's, and it's, we've already begun that process with Devil's Night. We just, have to, we just have to get the funding. And the day that we get the funding, I'm probably going to cry a little bit, and I'm going to sleep really good that night. We both are because well, we know what's coming next, which is a whole lot more hard work through getting the production made. Oh, and just to prove your point, the guy back in the control room right now, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this if it wasn't him wanting to help out and come on board and help us complete. And he's helped us with the other films. he done a little uh, background video on us and uh, done some interviewing, interviewed uh, Moses Mosley and a few people, yep. and uh, done some behind the scenes, and we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if it wasn't for David Abrams. So that's just, Well, we would, it, but it would just be in like a, yeah, like it would a, be in a walk-in closet at your yeah, house yeah. with stuff yeah. everywhere on the floor. So, so much for taking, thank, thank you, David. Yes, thank you, David. <laughs> well, that is the proof point. I mean, it's- it Haley, is, I'm kidding. There's so many people involved that people don't realize and i guess maybe we don't think enough or, or you know or what we do but i mean it is i mean things like david doing this and all the people that have come on board people that have bought the shirts and hey if you you are watching it or or you're going to watch this later and you have bought a shirt we we do have them in that's what these are we are going to yep. be getting them out all out within the next couple of weeks hopefully if you haven't we're here talking about ordering them and here's how you can order go to bloodmanpictures.com and click on order it will be 25 with shipping and handling we have small all the way up to 3X. We can get the shirt to you. Um, like I said, we'll start getting them out here this week. Uh, so everybody should have pre-orders within the next two weeks. We just now got them, and we wanted to go ahead and let everybody know they're here. Yep. They're for sale. Ones that have already ordered, you're going to be getting them And when soon. you get your shirts, put them on, take a picture, and send them to us, and we'll, we'll, we'll get those out there. And then go, hey, thank you for – look, look, look who bought this shirt and how they bought it and how you can buy one too. That's right. And you can help us out. Tag us. Tag, tag us in it. That's right. All right. Well, I think we're coming to the end anyway, yeah, yeah. so we can go ahead and cut this. Oh, no, no, you're, you're fine. fine. You're fine. We're being told that we're bad boys and we yeah. got to go. <laughs> no, I think apparently I, there's an apocalypse probably, outside probably and we need to leave. Marked, yeah. So here, I'm going to go move my car and I'm going to let you close it out. All right. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to be a deer in headlights because I'm by myself now. And, I feel like that and, and, and now, so David leaves your microphone with you empty. Oh, look, who just walked by the camera. So anyway, guys, um, this is the end of Shirt Talk. 
Uh, we might do this again sometime soon. Sorry, PJ had to walk out for a minute, so we're going to close on this. We're here just letting you know about the shirts are in. If you've ordered already, you're going to be getting them within the next couple weeks and you haven't. Um, you can go to bloodmoonpicks.com and order from small to 3x with shipping. It will be $25. All proceeds do go to Devil's Night, well, Volumes Blood, Devil's Night, Volumes Blood 3 uh, to get it made. It uh, all goes to production for that. Let us know. Look us up. Bloodmoonpicks.gmail.com. And uh, we'll talk at you all next time. Have a good night.